and you suddenly start to become like a police officer, you know, you're engaging in these conversations telling them you can't come into the building and then you're up against, you know, what will be the result of this conversation? Will they never come back to my business because we didn't allow them in? Um, or, you know, um, will they go away and write a one-star review about the fact that they couldn't come in? Lockdown number four continues in Victoria, but regional Victoria is coming out of the hard lockdown. Restrictions are easing and restaurants are allowed to reopen. Of course, reopening is never as simple as just throwing the doors open and asking people how they like their coffee. Uh, so we are going to check in with a regional business owner. His name is Liam Thornycroft and he's the owner of two businesses in Dalesford, about an hour and a half from Melbourne, Cliffy's Emporium and next door, Beppy's. Welcome to the podcast, Liam. Thanks for having me, Danny. How are things going? Oh, gosh, where to begin? Um, look, at the moment, things are obviously pretty grim, like everywhere, whether you're in metro or regional at the moment. Um, it's uh, like, obviously, the town's dead and there's not much happening around, but um, we're all sort of quickly trying to frantically um, pivot, I suppose, um, to get our businesses up and running um, and determine sort of whether that will be viable for um, for our businesses. Obviously, every business is different. Um, the announcement of the uh, density requirements means some businesses will be fine and obviously some won't be able to open at all. So we're sort of just making those calculations at the moment. So talk me through some of those calculations in a bit more detail. What kinds of things have you been, you know, what numbers have you been crunching? Yeah, well, I suppose the biggest one is, um, oh, I guess, like staffing versus what we can actually, how many people we can accommodate inside the building. Um, the different two venues we've got, um, Beppi, which is our Italian sort of style trattoria, is a larger venue, um, which has sort of multiple spaces and, and can accommodate with the current, current density requirements, um, 31 people, um, while Cliffy is being a rather large building in itself, but based on the dining spaces, we can only accommodate eight inside. So um, that's like outrageous compared to what we would normally um, uh, accommodate, especially pre-COVID for anyone that sort of knew Cliffy's pre-COVID. They would know that, you know, Cliffy's was all about pretty much sitting on top of each other, either people jammed in every corner and um, along the countertops. And that was sort of the charm of it. Um, but, you know, having a dining room with only eight people in it, which would normally have, say, 24, um, is a pretty soulless space. So um, we have to determine uh, if we open that space and if we're going to have to do that, we have to have obviously an employee in that space. And then we've got a main room area, which we could uh, um open as well but then that would mean we'd have to have another employee opening the outside area means that we'd have to have another employee and with the um government announcement that we will be doing our favorite thing to do id checks um we will have to have someone most likely sort of maitre ding and iding um if we're open seven days seven days a week oh there's so much isn't there so the first thing that i want to say is that not long before we entered the pandemic, I did enjoy brunch at Cliffy's and I sat in, yeah, like inserted myself into the window seat and it is that real, it is, there's so much beautiful produce to look at. As you say, there's that gorgeous counter. So inserted myself into the window seat and had a kedgeree for breakfast, which was so delicious. I can see it in front of me now, so fragrant and just beautiful rice and smoked fish and an egg. It was just, yeah, it's just really soulful food. Um, so yeah, it is sad to think about that space, you know, unable to be occupied and yeah, un unable to have the character that is so much what it's all about. Um, and then, yeah, you just, I guess when you, as you speak, I suppose I think of those short lines in the government documents that explain the restrictions for hospitality in regional Victoria and just how everyone has to pick over them and try to interpret them. And you just think, you know, almost they could swap you know, the, so there's this word venue. So you're allowed to have 50 people per venue subject to the density restrictions. But what if it was room? You know, that would make things completely different, wouldn't it? Absolutely. And you mentioned the the postcode check. So people from Melbourne are not allowed to dine in in regional restaurants. I mean, talk me through that. You've been through that before. What is what's, What is that like practically, emotionally? <laughs> like, how do you manage that? 
Oh, it can be it can be really tough for the person that has to do it on the door because you've got um, obviously you've got people coming up with their idea of what you know a, a suitable form of ID might be. So I remember in the last um, lockdown where we had to do these ID checks, we had people turning up with you know electricity bills or their rates notice. We had people that had recently bought in the area and they hadn't updated their addresses yet. So you know they come in with like a, a letter from their real estate agent or something like that, and obviously that wasn't determined as a valid ID um, reference. So then you have to have this you know conversation and you suddenly suddenly start to become like a police officer you know you're engaging these conversations telling them you can't come into the building and then you're up against you know what will be the result of this conversation will they never come back to my business because we didn't allow them in um or you know um will they go away and write a one-star review about the fact that they couldn't come in um it's just yeah it's a really tough one and then you i think in the different lockdowns we've seen different um different attitudes towards uh, staff members where, you know, after the first lockdown, people came out and they were like really um, appre appreciative of our staff and really kind and, um, you know, never, um, I don't know, you wouldn't really hear them like raise their voices and things like that. After the second lockdown, um, it, people came out and they just did not care. They were ruthless. They'd rip into staff members. I was constantly like, you know, in at the back hiding in what we call our office and I'd come racing out to defend staff members. Um, so I'm really nervous about sort of reopening and having to deal with that confrontation again because it's something that I don't think we should have to do. But obviously at the moment we really do have to do. Um, so, yeah, it's a tricky one. That is so terrible and I suppose you, you – you don't want to put a staff member in the line of fire, so to speak. Um, but of course, for you to be playing that role, it also yeah takes you out of doing all the other things that you need to be doing. It must be so hard to manage. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And like you know, the staff, you know, on the front line of of our businesses, they're certainly not paid, you know, enough to have to deal with that. No one should have to deal with that sort of confrontation or that aggression. Um, and so I'm really hoping that sort of uh, the government, sort of in their messages that they're delivering at the moment, they're a little bit more clear in terms of the physical IDs. We've had a few emails coming through to our restaurant tonight saying I'm booked in for the weekend. I don't have suitable ID. Um, on me like you know what can I do and so suddenly we become <laughs> this like reference point for you know well go to this link on this website and this is what you know you have to do in order to come in and it's just that extra um I don't know governance that we and time that it spends doing that and fulfilling those inquiries that you just wouldn't believe you would be doing <laughs> It's really crazy. I mean, <laughs> the conversations that we have to have these days, I was just walking the dog and chatting to a friend who's lives in London, but her family's here. So she, you know, mum's unwell. She came out quarantined and then she's gone into a lockdown. Um, and, you know, she was, I was just chatting to her. She's like, well, I think, you know, uh, she and her boyfriend, he's working elsewhere they were they, she's like well we've decided we'll probably try to meet back in London you know at the start of July so we can quarantine together it's like oh my god like how do we have these conversations in our lives now it's just so crazy I know and it it's just become so, so, so normal. We've got a friend that's visiting from London at the moment and she's she spent two weeks in quarantine to come to her sister's wedding and she's just got out um, in Sydney. We've obviously been so clear. She's flown down to Melbourne and we're in a lockdown so the wedding's oh. off. <laughs> she, can't, she can't do anything. She can't leave the house. So she's going to get out of this lockdown and have to fly home. <laughs> that is so bad. It's just awful. So you've got the other business, Beppies, which is yeah, more of a restaurant than Cliffy's, which is more of a, a drop-in place in normal times. Tell us about, you know, how you've sort of been managing forward reservations in that with the restrictions, like if you've got too many customers booked in for the capacity now, what do you do? Yes, we've we've been um, discussing, for, like for both businesses, only well, for Beppy about half an hour ago, we've sort of just made the decisions in terms of what we're going to be doing moving forward. Cliffy's is still a little bit up in the air. But with Beppy, um, we've basically sent out an email to those that have been booked on days that we have scaled back on. So we're not going to return to being, we were previously like a five-day operation and we're scaling back to three days um, due to sort of staffing situations as well as um, extending our trade through to seven days of takeaway um, because we believe there'll be sort of lots of people in town over this week. Um, but we've basically had to contact them and just say that, you know, due to the lockdown, we're going, we're, we're not going to be able to fulfill their bookings, which is an incredibly difficult conversation to have because people, you know, previously were booking three to four months ahead. You know, a normal <gasps> um, Saturday night, we would have, um, you know, say, not well, when I say normal, I mean like, you know, a couple of weeks ago, normal, um, we would have, say, 90 people or say 110 people booked into the restaurant in a night and there'd be, 
90 to 110 people on our waiting list to get in. Like regional was just chockers. Wow. Um, and so coming to this now, it's just like, you know, people have been so organized and booked in and we've like, we're having to cancel them and rearrange them because there's like, you know, 31 in, in a room at a time. And we're like, well, how do we choose who gets canceled and who doesn't? And we've decided to kind of go in on a, who got in first basis. But um, yeah, it's, it's a really tricky one. And then that, like I said before, we're up against that whole thing of like, you know, do people respond to this in that they choose not to come back to us or do they write a poor review or do they not tell people about us? Like we're trying to get them to reschedule, but we're kind of like, well, when can you reschedule too? <laughs> like, yeah, so it's really, really tricky. Yeah, so tricky and so draining when everyone's already pretty drained. Oh, 100%. And what proportion of your customers would be coming from Melbourne though, Liam? Like I just wonder, would that sort of balance out or not really? Yeah, no, I don't know. I keep – like it's, it's it's terrible that I can actually reflect on being in this situation before because obviously we've come out of this lockdown before and gone into this mode of kind of regional only. And I remember last time for both businesses it was incredibly difficult because it, it's, a, it's a different clientele that are travelling from, you know, say for us, Bendigo, Ballarat, Geelong or down the surf coast and they're coming across. Um, it's a different clientele to the the Melbourne clientele um, in that, you know, the, the Melbourne clientele come up here and, you know, they'll spend a lot of money, they'll stay here. Where we found in the when we were doing the last regional lockdown that we were, you know, lots of people coming and they would only have one glass of wine because they would then have to drive back to Bendigo or drive back to Ballarat. So it's a reduced spend. So what we've sort of had to do is we've put in minimum spend, put minimum spends in place in terms of like an earlier sitting will be, say, minimum of $40. So we apply that to the bill and a later one would be like $60, which which isn't a lot in sort of a restaurant setting. Um, but we can't run the risk of having 31 patrons sitting in the restaurant sharing a pizza and having a glass of wine, if you know what I mean, during these times. But that is very um, – that's quite simple to introduce into a restaurant setting. Like we won't – I don't think we'll really struggle with that. But say at Cliffy's, it's a different story being a cafe environment. You know, we, we have since the first – coming out of the first lockdown had a $20 deposit that you pay online when you book in. Um, and that deposit is applied to your bill, but that just means it's, and that's, you don't, you, no balances are refunded or anything like that. It's very hard to not spend on the $20 a person, but if you're going to be guaranteed a booking, you'll be, um, you, you'll, you know, you'll be made sure that you have a seat and you've got a one hour booking to sit there. Um, but, you know, in, in a cafe environment for us to do that, we can't be like, okay, well, now that we only have eight seats, the value of that seat is suddenly like, you know, you need to spend $200 per, per person because the other 20 or um, 16 seats, whatever, have now been removed. Um, it's just impossible. So it's a little bit easier in, in the setting of the restaurant than it is the cafe. Mm, but then so do you go back to people that have booked in and say in, in the restaurant and you say uh, getting quick if you want, to still come by the way you have to spend more mm, and yeah it's so funny that you said that we did we had this discussion yesterday so because we um immediately stopped all bookings as soon as we went into this lockdown we have had to consider you know how much people have booked in for certain experiences um coming out of lockdown and we've just decided to honor them because we we've, we've lost probably 80 percent of the bookings um that were coming up from Melbourne, which, sorry, goes back to your question of um, how many people. I would say on a weekend it would be probably 80% of the people in the restaurant would be. But as I also mentioned, you know, we have every weekend or most nights of the week we have quite an extensive wait list, which is fantastic. So there could be people on there that are more last-minute bookings from, you know, locals or someone in Ballarat that's like, oh, you know, it's we're 30 minutes away, got off work early, let's head over to Beppy and have a wine, but you can't <laughs> because it's already booked. So I think there's room to sort of fill the seats with more regional guests, but it's whether that happens and, you know, whether they um, will be able to meet the spend that we require when we've got these strict density re restrictions or limitations. Uh, it's so intense. I mean, what are your contemporaries in regional Victoria saying to you about whether they're opening, whether they're not, what's, you know, what's worth doing, what other kinds of, you know, rules are they putting in play? Yeah, it's a real, um, it's a real mixed bag. Like we've got, um, we've got some pretty good like alliances with smaller businesses up here, which we, you know, all stick together and we have like group chats and we make decisions between us on what's happening or who's opening on what day, so someone else can open on the other day and things like that. It's a really lovely, well, that's nice um, community to be amongst. But um, yeah, the discussion's certainly been taking place today of who's going to be opening and not and who's not. But um, 
Yeah, I don't know. It's I I would say for this weekend, a lot of the businesses aren't opening because they're a little bit sort of overwhelmed with what to do and how to manage it. And um, yeah, well, just so some are opening, some aren't. Yeah, they just it's 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 a real mixed bag. Um, I for us in particular, like around that sort of conversation of will we be opening? Um, when I originally had sort of quite clearly stated that we wouldn't be opening, um, today's announcement that stated that regional sort of won't be supported in terms of their casual staffing um, has really had, like, has really changed my mind in terms of what we're going to have to do because um, we've got a whole heap of casual staff members that are sitting at home sort of waiting for us to give them information. Like we, we've we kind of spoon fed them all of that information during the previous lockdown of, you know, this is how you get your job seeker payment. There is a payment coming. And today when we've got delivered the information um, that we as regional won't be supported um, moving forward in terms of that payment, um, that's had, that's made us have to really reconsider opening because there's you know we've got all these casuals sitting at home that are, are relying on us to give them that work, um, so we're sort of running the risk of well we will be absolutely running at a loss by opening um, with these density requirements, um, but it's a decision that we're just going to have to we're just going to have to do it so we can retain those staff because we can't afford to lose good staff members or any staff members for that matter. I wanted to ask you about the government income support package, which has just been announced. Um, So it it seems very calibrated to um, leave people out, Um, although it has included visa holders for the first time, which um, I think is really amazing, surprising, and, yeah, it just makes me... I'm so surprised. I'm just wondering what the catch is. Um, but it's so it's an income support. If you've lost more than 20 hours work a week, you are entitled to claim $500. If you've lost less than 20 hours a week, you're entitled to claim $325. But it only applies for lockdowns that extend longer than seven days. So the regional Victorian lockdown, which ends after seven days, uh, you're not eligible. I mean, w- what do you think about that? Yeah, well, it's been really hard to process because I think like the other lockdowns, you sort of just kind of relied on having that government support behind you. But going into previous lockdowns when we've had that JobKeeper support behind us, which we had for Cliffy's, but we'd never received any JobKeeper for Bepi the entire time. I'll just drop that one in there. <laughs> um, it's yeah, it's incredibly um, hard to process. We've got um, you know staff members that are just sitting at home um, waiting to find out how we're going to support them or how we're going to look after them. Um, and the answer is is that we can't. We don't have um, stores to be able to, you know, just give the money to stay at home. They don't have annual leave accrued. They don't have time in lieu they can use. Um, so, look, I think moving forward, if that's a strategy that's going to be in place, that does give us great peace of mind. Um, going into this lockdown, that was the biggest problem is that we didn't know that that we would be bailed out. We, when we were making decisions, we were like, well, you know, how are we going to get through it? At least this way, moving forward, if we know there's a lockdown that's <clears throat> pushed on us, um, we know that our staff will be supported. Um, but, yeah, at this stage, um, it's it's really it's really disappointing. It is. It's really it's really tough because so many hospo workers really do live from week to week, don't they? Oh, a hundred percent. And it's not just hospo workers. Like we've got, well, they are hospo workers, but in our teams, we've got you know um, students, we've got um, single parents, and all of these people. And while well, you know we we know them like family, we know their financial positions, um, all of those sort of things. And you just you just die inside thinking like it's you kind of like have this this um pressure that you are there to help and provide for them um but you can't in these times and the best thing we've been able to do this week has been like reach out to them and just be like look if you need any food or if you need um a meal or dinner or anything like that like just discreetly let me know and we'll feed you and all that sort of stuff but you know people are pretty proud and don't want to have to come forth to their employer and do those sort of things so yeah it's um yeah it's been a, a, a tough week it is really really heartbreaking. I've spoken to a lot of different businesses this week that have been cooking up food for their own employees and giving food away to other people in need. One thing that um, I was told today by someone who was cook- doing a big cook up was that she felt that that sort of pr- that pride had been dismantled a little bit by coming in and out of lockdowns and that there was less shame around saying that you're in need. And I don't know, she thought that was a good thing and I can see that it is like if you need help, you know, you should be able to ask for it. No one, we didn't bring this on ourselves. It's um, it's a global pandemic. But if you know, I guess everyone takes it differently. Some people are still uh, wanting, you know, battle through it themselves, and other people are, yeah, I guess 
um, happy or not happy, but they will accept help that's offered to them. It's a really, it's a really difficult thing. We dealt with that a lot last year when we were giving out food at Attica Soup Project. It's, um, I don't know, I felt like it was my, pri- my privilege to be able to give that food, but um, it's, really, it's a really difficult thing for people to accept it sometimes. Yeah. Um, so what, so you're coming out of lockdown when this goes to air, it'll be Friday. Um, yeah. What are you, what are you going to be doing? <laughs> um, so at this stage, uh, we'll resume, um, dinner services at Bepi at least for this weekend. Um, we've sort of made the decision that we're just going to get through this weekend and see what happens in terms of, um, regional visitation and see how many people are in the town before sort of making a decision of what we do the following. Um, obviously we're just kind of monitoring everything very closely at the moment and it will continue evolving, but, um, Bepi will return to doing dinner services, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights. Um, and then the entire Monday through to Sunday, we'll be doing takeaway, um, and then as in terms of Cliffy's, uh, we are still slightly unsure as to exactly what it will look like, but um, most likely we'll be reopening this Sunday um, and going back to a very, very capped service, um, running uh, a total of 21 covers and hoping that we can turn them over multiple times. <laughs> yeah, so spend big but spend quickly is the message to punters out there in regional Victoria. Um it's uh, Liam, I'm sure, you know, no one goes into life as a business owner thinking that they're going to need to shepherd their business and their staff through anything like this. But how are you feeling about uh, being a business owner at the moment? Um, oh, gosh, like I don't even know where to begin. Um, it's like it's an absolute bloody roller coaster. Like, you know, I have days where I just absolutely love what we do and then I have days where I just like want to break down and just cry and, you know, I've got an incredible family around me and um, in wonderful business partners, which is so important in this um, at this time to be able to, you know, get together and just kind of brainstorm and work out what you're going to do and how you're going to pivot and all that sort of stuff. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Like it's, it's obviously a real challenge um, but – it's I don't know you just sort of just get up and you go and and there's this weird part of me that every time we have like a lockdown um or we have a big announcement you sort of and at first you sort of die your heart sinks um you get kind of upset by it and then you just sort of snap and you just have to get out of that that mode and you just kind of start kind of get you know getting ideas and reinventing yourself and just work out how you're going to survive you go into like this weird survival mode and it's strangely become very normal. Like um, coming into this lockdown, I was kind of like, oh my God, I can't do it again, like whatever. But I I knew it was only a short one. It was only going to be for a week. Well, I didn't know that, but like I assumed because that was the advice, it was only going to be short. But um, yeah, I don't know. You just sort of get this rush and you just have to go with it. But if anyone ever told me that, you know, this is what managing a business or being a business owner would be like, I probably, um, I don't know if I'd go ahead with it. (laughs) But also, maybe I wouldn't want to be an employee either. <laughs> yeah, there's probably no good side of the fence for this one. Um, no, well, we're all in it together. That I know that's really cliche that that statement, but you know, we at the end of the day, we are like we're all just trying to get through this and trying to end it and trying to you know get back to some sort of normal. And hopefully, that's not too far away. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully it's not too far away, and then hopefully it sticks. Um, yeah, and. It's just so hard to, it's going to be really hard to trust normal again, I reckon. But I suppose if if that gets people checking in to venues like Maniacs and getting vaccinated, then then that's a good thing. Um, Well, Liam, I I wish you customers that are extremely kind and understanding and very wealthy or at least ready to spend. Um, And, yeah, I just hope that uh, Melbourne's allowed to visit you again soon. I look forward to coming in for um, some delicious food and beautiful hospitality before too long. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on, Danny. Um, I I would also like to drop in there that the uh, Kedri is making a winter comeback. <laughs> so if you'd love yes. to uh, come up, I would love to shout you a bowl of Kedri for all the work you've done for us in our industry. Thank you. I will gladly take you up on that. It's so delicious, um, just the most comforting dish. And, um, yeah, a really, uh, yeah, just showcasing regional produce and just, yeah, super, super, a super hospitable hug in a bowl. Thank you so much, Liam, and take care and good luck. No worries, Danny. Thanks so much. 
This is Dirty Linen and I'm Danny Vallant. We air the issues that the hospitality industry finds hard to talk about. We spend a week thrashing around each issue, hearing from different people with unique perspectives. We want to hear from you as well. If you have something that needs to be said about a topic, get in touch so we can include your perspective. Contact us at dirtylinen at deepintheweeds.com.au or hit us up on Insta at Dirty Linen Podcast. We can't wait to hear from you. This.